Uh, I like to show what it does first. So here's Hello World. It's just a Svelte tutorial with a list of heroes. I like my heroes. <laughs> and you might recognize some of the names. <laughs> and when you select one, you can then edit the name down here. So we'll change um, Biggs Darklighter to Christopher. <laughs> and you're going to be born in the same year. And then I can save this one if I want to. That's not hooked up, but you'll notice that the data down here does not reflect what's happening up here because they're in different places. And we'll kind of look at that. Okay. So that's the application. Let's kind of go side by side. Here's the actual app that's running it. We'll go full screen so we can see more. The place to start with these, and let's close that down, is just to look at the folder structure. I'll zoom in even more because we're going to take a look there. And this is in a GitHub repo, so we can share this out with folks uh, as well. Mm -hmm. The first thing we do with Svelte app is they generally tell you to create it from a, a GitHub repo. So up here, they show you where it is. This is where the GitHub repo came from. Uh, we can go get that. It's at GitHub on line seven, Svelte JS template. And there's instructions on how to go get that. That's what's here on line 12. So if people are wondering, how did I get this app first you know, pulled together? This command from a command line will create an app for you. Um, let's move to the next step. It generates this folder structure. And in that, we get a package JSON. Now, I like to look at the package JSON because this kind of tells you what's going on. Uh, it's got some scripts. We're going to be running this uh, dev script. That basically runs it with, and when changes happen, it'll actually update for us automatically and recompile. That's what the W means, means there's a watcher. It'll watch the file, so as we make changes, it should restart it. And then there's dev dependencies and dependencies. Notice there's only one runtime dependency. And because my app has no server, and I want to run it locally so you can see it, Christopher, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a dependency called serve CLI, but normally there'd be none. There'd literally be zero runtime dependencies in the Celt app, which is pretty mind-boggling if you think about it. That, that, that really is, because I know at the very least with like React that you have that, that React and React DOM as dependencies. So going back to your original point, this is then at, at build time, uh, compile time, emitting that raw HTML CSS JavaScript. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you emphasized that because that's why you'll notice here, other people might think Svelte on line 18, wait a minute, why is that a dev dependency? Like, don't you need Svelte, like it's runtime to go to the browser and... Well, yes and no. So at compile time, it's using rollup. Obviously, there's a lot of rollup going on. Um, and the creator of Svelte also created rollup. So thus, that's what's happening. Um, so Svelte at compile time gets compiled into your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And then it ships that, those assets, up to the browser. And there's little, there is a little bit of Svelte runtiminess that gets shipped in those files, but it's really, really tiny. And when I say really, really tiny, I've written Hello World apps in Svelte that were like 4K. I mean, it, there's not a lot going on there um, in the application. That's impressive. One other side note, Christopher, is that I mentioned Rollup. You can use Webpack with Svelte as well. There's templates to do that, because I know people like Webpack. Uh, and I'll be remiss if I didn't mention that the next version of Svelte, um, there is a, gosh, I think it's a beta right now of Svelte Kit. So you and I have had some chats about this. Svelte Kit is effectively the next version of Svelte, which includes a CLI and a bunch of other things that come with it. We're not going to get into that today. Um, apps that run in Svelte today will run with Svelte Kit. So that's all you need to know about that. Yeah. Svelte Kit is pretty slick. I've, I've played around with that a little bit. It's, it's pretty slick. Yeah. And the next thing to think about is like the folder structure. Uh, source is source code. <laughs> That's where we put our source code. <laughs> um, we don't need that. Scripts is there because of the way TypeScript works right now. This helps us kind of get there. That's something that probably would go away. I don't even think it's there with Svelte Kit. I don't think that it is. But yeah. But let's let's ask the question real quick, mostly just to make Aaron Powell um, happy. Is sure. Does Svelte uh, support TypeScript? Absolutely. Just not for people named Aaron Powell. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'll, we'll give a quick glimpse forward. If we look at this code, did I do TypeScript in this app? Let's see, where's the code? Do, do, do. I don't think I chose it, but let's see if I did let name string equals Christopher. Ah, too much stuff going on. 
Uh, nope, this one does not support TypeScript because I did not choose it. But I do have one that has it in it. Yeah, I know there's no editor. OK. <laughs> I like to look at the folders first because it gives people an idea of what's there. Uh, and I'm going reverse alphabetical. Public is what gets served. This is what's going to end up on the web. So here is, like when I say it's just CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, this is the HTML. That's the index page. There's some global CSS that I pulled in, uh, a favicon. And then the build folder has the CSS and JavaScript that are bundled, that get created through the Svelte compilation process. And you can see it's just standard JavaScript. Um, and you're not expected to look at this or run this, but you know the browser will run this part. Uh, and then we've got node modules, which is any dependencies. And VS Code is just a configuration folder. Roughly about 50 gigs or so. Uh, yeah, no, node modules, not VS yeah. Code, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, node modules, 50 gigs, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then the source folder is the interesting stuff. There's four main files in this app. Main is where we start. And that's pretty consistent, I think, through Angular, React, Vue, and Svelte, right? Yeah, or, or some, some sort of a bootstrapper. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a bootstrapper. And I could have looked here to say, hey, is it port supporting JavaScript or TypeScript? There's the first hint. <laughs> it's a JavaScript file. So because this is 101, hello world, I just chose JavaScript. That makes sense. And now what this does is it says, OK, a couple of key things here. And let's just get rid of that for a minute. Um, and why did I have two of these in here? That's interesting. <laughs> so uh, what we've got here is every pattern you'll see out of these files is they'll be exporting something. So whatever's in this file is being exported as what's known as a JavaScript module. Uh, and everything in this file ends up being, if somebody refers to main.js, which Svelte is looking for main.js, uh, that's how it's connected, as its starting point, it's bootstrapper. It says, by default, the thing called app is what you need to run. Now, I could have called it foo and named that foo up here, but that's what it is. And then app, you create a new app object. And the app object is something that is, um, you're referring to with, um, with, a, with a Svelte component. So there's a Svelte component called app, which is like your root component. We're saying create this new root component and put it, that's what target means, in the document's body. So we're literally going back to, you imagine this works. We're going back to this index.html page. And somewhere in here, there's a body. And it's going to replace the body with our Svelte app. OK. So then that would also imply that if I you know, only wanted to put it on like a, a, a smaller portion of the page, that I could use a selector and just go grab whatever that element yes. is and put it there. OK. Yes. And I'm, I'm only being a little cagey because I just haven't done it. So yeah. I don't want to give 100% yeah. there. 